Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yeah, it's recording now, so it's okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ozen Engineering webinar on topology optimization. We'll get going in just one minute. Okay, I'm going to get going now. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. This is Chris Cowan from Ozen Engineering, and we're uh, today Ahmed El Gondor is going to be speaking about topology optimization. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the questions toolbar or the chat toolbar uh, through GoToWebinar, and we'll answer those hopefully as the uh, presentation goes on. Quickly, to tell you a little bit about Ozen Engineering, we're a company that's focused entirely on simulation. We use finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics to solve multi-physics, multidisciplinary engineering problems. We're an ANSYS channel partner in Northern California. What that means is we sell ANSYS software, we train customers on using the software, we provide technical support to our customers, and we also uh, provide engineering consulting services. So if you ever have any projects that you'd like assistance with, we can do those for you, get you the project files, and teach you how to use them to get you jump started on, on your project or just do it all ourselves. So we sell ANSYS software products that includes fluids, structures, e electronics, and general multi-physics capabilities including optics. In addition, we provide cloud compute resources and virtual reality software for uh, virtual reality collaboration. It's like a WebEx tool for virtual reality. Every Wednesday at this time, we, we present a webinar on a different topic. You can see the previous topics that we have done. Next week, we'll be speaking on heat transfer, transfer using ANSYS CFD. Uh, I'd like to invite you to join any and all of these. You can register on our website at ozeninc.com slash training, and you can also register directly through the ANSYS website. In addition, if you, you'd like to get these updates by email, please register for our newsletter. We'll, we'll send out an update mm, approximately once a month. Okay, so we'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact us whenever you're available. You can email info at ozeninc.com. You can call us directly on our phones. That The number's listed on our website as well, ozeninc.com website. So a quick intro. Ahmed is an engineer here at Ozen Engineering. He's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Cairo and then MS and PhD from University Illinois at Chicago. He's got 10 years of FEA experience and eight years specifically with ANSYS. With that, I'll turn it over to him. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, let me be the presenter. All right. 
Thank you again, Chris. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ahmed Gondour, and I'm, uh, I'll be the one presenting the webinar today. Uh, please feel free to ask questions when you have, and I'll try to answer it on the spot uh, or at the end of the webinar. So today I'm going to speak about ANSYS or topology optimization. So the first thing to ask is, what is ANSYS topology optimization? Basically, uh, this tool in ANSYS Mechanical, it, it, it provides us with a tool we can use to improve our design. We can make it more durable, can make it lightweight, and we can apply it to any design we have, either as a simple component or an assembly. This has happened through the, uh, a bunch of objectives you specify and some uh, manufacturing uh, requirement or some constraints, you select them to achieve the final optimized geometry without affecting uh, your performance as, 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 a, as an object and to be able to achieve your goals, but with optimized geometry. So why is this needed? A lot of components when you, or, or, or mechanical part, when you start the design, you usually the, 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 the designer will think about how to make this achieve the goals, right? So he make a part, uh, but this part might have a lot of unneeded mass, which make a lot of loads on the joints, make a lot of, make it heavier and more expensive uh, because some parts which have no uh, stresses no uh, will be included because of just the preliminary design. So with topology optimization, you can achieve much lightweight component with much more efficient uh, cost without uh, affecting your uh, performance uh, as a mechanical component. Uh, topology optimization is also uh, very useful when it comes to additive manufacturing a lot of uh, people who do additive manufacturing, they start by doing topology optimization because they, wa they don't want to waste a lot of time and money printing unnecessary component or unnecessary material uh, to their parts. So when they optimize the parts, they can get the, the most efficient component to print and save time as well as money. So what is the objective that I'm, I'm talking about here? When you start your optimization, you have to have a specific objective. What do you want to optimize? Okay, what is your goal? What is the, the thing that is the most important for you to optimize uh, or keep when you're trying to uh, apply topology optimization? The main one is what's called elastic compliance or stiffness. You always try to maximize the stiffness or minimize the compliance of your system. This is the main goal that a lot of people will focus on when they do uh, topology optimization. We can see here minimizing the compliance is equivalent to maximizing the global stiffness of your component. You want your component to be, to be light, but at the same time you want it to be strong enough or stiff enough so it, can, it doesn't break. Uh, when we do the topology optimization, there is a lot of constraint you can apply uh, to your part. And this constraint with the objective will help you to have uh, the, the optimi optimized shape based on the zero one concept for the elements you're going to use in your, in your geometry. You're going to see that in the demo. Some elements will be zero, so it disappears. Some element is one, so it still exists completely or, or in between some elements that can be like kind of cut to have uh, the best optimized shape. Other objectives people work on besides the compliance is the mass. I want to minimize the mass of my part or the volume. I want to minimize the volume of my part. So objective compliance, uh, I'm sorry, uh, volume compliance and mass are the main objectives that people focus on in their analysis. Uh, okay, analysis types. When we deal with opt uh, topology optimization, we use it mainly with a static structure or model analysis. This is the main two analysis type 
for now that you can use topology optimization with. You can use multiple of each one. So you can have a project in Ansys workbench, and you can have uh, you can have a lot of static structure analysis, and then you can optimize each one of them or all of them using topology optimization. Same with a model analysis. Uh, with model analysis, another factor will jump in to be optimized, which in this case will be the frequency. You can optimize, uh, you try to optimize your geometry to maximize, for example, the minimum frequency. So you want to skip certain, uh, certain uh, range of frequencies. You can use topology optimization to achieve this goal. So how we can do that? So I'm going to give you a quick uh, uh, idea about how we do that. And then we're going to go for a demo uh, to show you uh, practice on how to do topology optimization for a simple model. So basically, we start with whatever analysis we want to do, static structure, as I said, or model analysis. And then you connect it with topology optimization. You can see here on the left, there is topology optimization. You drag it and you drop it on the solution. So for example, uh, this example here, you have this part which we're gonna use in the in the training, in the, in the demo. You have this part here, you have some fixed support, you have force, and then you wanna optimize it. So you do the, your structural analysis, get your stresses, get your strain, uh, uh, deformation, etc., and then you start doing your optimization. As, so you drop it here on the result, you get the topology optimization component in your project, you solve it, and then you can save your part as an STL, and then you can reuse it uh, for your analysis. Uh, you can see here, for example, this is an initial solution, and then this is an optimized uh, geometry. We'll show that in the, in the practice soon. All right. So this is typical workbench flow here you start with your model you do analysis static structure you solve whatever loads and boundary condition and any uh, typical analysis you or any typical settings for your model once you are done you connect it to topology optimization you will see here there's two main uh, tabs here that what we're going to use uh, to def you need to define. They automatically inserted, and then you need to define each one of them. I'm going to speak about them uh, in the in the following slides. Optimization region, objective, and response uh, constraint. Okay. Okay. Somebody is asking, do we have thermal simulation? No, not yet. And somebody is asking uh, to elaborate for the objective and constraint. Okay, this is coming. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in the coming slides. All right. So here, for example, we're talking about the objective and the response constraint. You can see here. You are very welcome. Okay. You can see here uh, for the objective. Here's the main objective you want. What is your goal? Is it compliance? Is it volume? Is it mass? You will see in the training, you select one of these and then you specify how much do, what do you want it to do? Do you want to minimize it? Do you want to maximize it? Do you want to add weight as 100% or like just 50%? And then you can specify this to multiple, as I said, you can have multiple analysis, like different structure analysis. You can apply to each one of these at any objective you are interested uh, in. You can see here for, st for static, it's compliance, volume, and mass. But when we talk in model, objective will be frequency, volume, and mass. Okay? All right. For the uh, response constraint, basically, you're trying to apply a constraint on your model. Like, I want my model to be for example, I want the frequency to stay between the range of, let's say, 200 hertz and 300 hertz. So make sure that the optimized geometry give me a frequency of this range. Because if you don't set a range, it might be optimized, but give you a very low frequency, a very high frequency. But you are interested in a particular 
range of frequency. Same with the stiffness. I, uh, I'm sorry, same with the stresses or masses. Maintain these stresses or maintain this uh, mass of the, of, 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 of the optimized component. So this is response. This is what I mean by response constraint. I want the response of my system to achieve this goal as well. Okay. In in uh, in older version of ANSYS, it was mainly mass, volume, and stresses. With the new versions of ANSYS, the response constraint now we added displacement, local vomitus stress, global vomitus stress, as well as your reaction force. So even reaction forces you can keep it in a certain range based on your own need. This, of course, depends on your uh, model and, and simulation. Okay. Uh, here, an example to show us the effect of different, uh, the effect of different constraint. Uh, we can see here on the left, this is optimized with respect to global stress. The one on the right is optimized with respect to high stiffness. So you can see defining your objective or your uh, constraint affect the, the final shape of your, of your optimized uh, model. Another example here, here is very clear. This one here is defined as uh, optimized with res respect to stiffness with minimum compliance as an objective and the mass to be 15%. The, uh, the other one, optimized with respect to stresses, minimize the mass instead of minimize the compliance and the stress to be less than 300 megapascal. Anything less than 300 megapascal is gone. So you can see the final shape here and the final shape here is different, right? You can see here the stiff, uh, the the stresses here was almost 900 megapascal, but here it went to like th uh, 360. You can see because of the, here the mass was limited to 15%. Here there is no constraint on the mass, just to minimize, but without a specific number. So you can see there's extra whips here, and instead of, of, of here there is, it was an empty and it was more focused here. So you can see in this example how the, how the modification of your objectives or your constraint affect the final geometry to achieve your own predefined goals. Uh, another issue uh, or another factor to look at if you are uh, if you are interested. This is not uh, uh, that's something you have to insert yourself, uh, which is the manufacturing constraint. Sometimes you want your component to have uh, specific needs for to be able to manufacturing it. So you need to have a ma manufacturability constraint for yourself such as the member size, pull-out direction, extrusion, cyclic, and symmetry. You want to make sure that the, fi the final shape can be, for example, uh, be extruded or can be pulled in a particular direction because this is how you're going to manufacture it. So this is some goals, you, uh, or this is some constraints, sorry, you need to define to achieve the ability to manufacture it. Okay. Uh, okay, I see a hand, but I don't see a question. Please, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat area. Because I saw a hand, but I didn't see a question. Okay. Uh, here, this is for uh, post-processing. This is post-processing here. You can see... Uh, on the right, these two here, the one on the right, it show you the topology based on the element. Okay, so it's an element, elemental density. You can see the red is the part that completely maintained. This element will be completely maintained. The blue is this element is completely removed. So this is a zero, this is one. And then in between, 
these elements you can keep it or remove it based on uh, how strict you want to stay to the optimized because the optimized shape okay because you can play with the uh, with the shape and retain it as is or you can give yourself a little bit of tolerance to make it more it's kind of a I don't want to say it's factor of safety but let's say uh, play a little bit with the geometry if if you think it's too thin for yourself here is the, is the final shape as it should be here is the final shape as it should be here it's in in elemental in, in elemental uh elementary presentation basically okay another thing you can get from uh ansys topology optimization is you can create a lattice structure this is mainly for people who do uh, uh additive manufacturing when you do an additive, additive manufacturing, you might need to have uh, a lattice structure and you want to optimize that as well. So you, ANSYS uh, helps you to do this using both mechanical and space claim to achieve a lattice structure as well. Okay. Uh, again, I see a hand. Uh, if you have a question, please. Just send it in the chat uh, window. I see a hand from Valmiki. Please write your question in the in the in the chat window, or you can unmute yourself if you want and ask a question. Okay. Uh, okay. Back to back to uh, topology. One of the most important tool when you do your topology optimization is ANSYS space claim. Because once you're done with your topology optimization, you save the, the optimized geometry as an STL file. And then you can take this STL file to space claim. And in space claim, you can work on this file to smooth it and make a little, uh, some modification to be more manufacturable using space claim facet step. This screen here in the bottom is the facet step of ANSI space claim. You can see it's mainly for STL file. You can shrink wrap the geometry, you can smooth it, uh, you can fix some, uh, if you have any issue, you can fix it. And then you can take this, uh, so you take the optimized shape, put in space claim, use the facet step to smooth it and work on it to make it in the more efficient shape and then you can save this go back to your uh, uh, further analysis or you take this shape uh, and use it for your uh, uh, additive manufacturing directly if you if you want to do additive manufacturing analysis a question is saying uh, is space claim the only option to read topology optimization file STL. Uh, I don't know. I'm speaking from ANSYS perspective. You can use you can uh, you can use space claim to read the STL and optimize it. I don't know if you have other CAD software or not, but I highly recommend using space claim to read the STL file because as I as I as you can see here, you can. Uh, you can work on it to make it in the best efficient way because when you come out of 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 um of the topology optimization you might have sharp corner you might have a uh, rough surface but when you when you uh, treat it in a space claim you will have a very smooth and uh manufacturable and uh, and uh manufacturable uh, component okay what are the limitation here? Is we work with linear analysis, right? So as I said, static analysis or model analysis. So we, if you have contact or any nonlinear material, this will not be uh, optimized. Okay, so you have to do uh, you, you have to do that. Okay, design modeler can read it. I think design modeler can read an STL file, but I don't think Design modeler has the capability to smooth the STL file. 
a question here is uh, about uh, design modeler. Uh, design modeler, I, I believe it can read the STL file, but it doesn't have this facets tab that you can have in a space claim to fix it. Okay. Uh, okay, you're very welcome. All right, so here are the element. We have shell, plane, and solid elements that are being used. Uh, for the topology optimization. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the demo. If you have any question before I start the demo, please ask. And uh, let me go now to here. One second, let me do this so I can see if you have any question. Injection modeling. Somebody is asking for the manufacturing method. Can it do injection modeling? Uh, I'm afraid not. It's not one of the manufacturing constraints. Uh, unless you can make a geometry that you can uh, inject in, uh, but I, I don't think it's one of the constraints. All right, so here, uh, let me show you. All right, so as here is typical ANSYS workbench, we start with a static structure and then we connect the topology optimization. You can see topology optimization is here. You just drag it and drop it on the solution and then it will be connected automatically. So I created an example. Let me show you. Here we have this plate. Okay, we define the geometry. It uh, it's, uh, sh we defined the let me material are defined. We are doing static structure. We have a remote force on this side here. We have some constraint on these sides here, and then we solve it. Here is the stresses. Sorry, here's the deflection. Let me put it in this way. You can see here, this is the geometry, uh, the stresses, uh, the straight uh, deformation and the stresses. So we define the, now we go to the topology optimization. As I said, these three are automatically inserted. So you can, it, it's already there. Now let's look at the optimization region. The first thing you need to define is what is your uh, what is your optimization region, okay? Here you can see you can select either by geometry or by name selection. In this in this part I have just one part so I will take the whole body. And one very important part here is the exclusion region. What what do you want to exclude? In this case we are excluding the boundary condition. However, you can define some part to be excluded. For example, if you are making, uh, if you know this part will be assembled through some joints or whatever, so you can make a part here as a separate part, as a separate part, and then this this part can be excluded. So you don't have to, uh, you don't, you don't. Uh, so this part stay exactly the way it is. Okay, this is a typical trick a lot of users will do. It's like divide your part around the joints. Or around the constraint to make to exclude a, comp a complete part uh, uh, from from the optimization process. Here, the optimization time. In our case, we are doing the typical top topology optimization. But if you want, from here, you can select the lattice optimization. So, from optimization region, you select the body you want optimized, the part you want to exclude, and if you want to do a typical optimization or lattice optimization. Objective. In this in this example, we are working on minimizing the compliance. You can see here, I can select compliance, mass, or volume, and then for the compliance, for example, do you want to minimize it or you want to maximize it? Formulation use uh, program control, or you can use force or displacement. 
here the environment I'm here using just one static structure but if you are having different static structure you can select which one you they will be listed here so you select which one you want to do okay and then the weight you're applying for, for this optimization and then start step end step etc when you change the response type these parameters here will vary so it works it, like based on whatever you select you need to adjust the rest here okay okay now we go to uh, response constraint response constraint is uh, you can see you select uh, uh, the region you're working on in this case the optimization region you defined here so you said whatever you define here will go here by by default and then you select what is the response what is the response you're working on the mass the volume stresses displacement or action force you select which one you want you define either as a constant or you can define it as a region a, a, a range sorry so you can say uh, between let's say 100 to 200 or whatever range you're working on or a constant and then retain in this case mass what is the retained uh, you want to you want to keep so in this case percent to retain uh, you want to keep so in this case I want to keep 50% of the mass so when it does the optimization 50% of the mass will be maintained and then oh, because I, I I open some stuff I have to solve it again okay let me quickly solve this should not take a lot of time and then what you can see here is this by default this is our created uh topology uh density which i'll show you now the, the the final shape based on the optimization according to what you defined here in your in your objective and your constraint okay until this is done let me show you uh it's almost done here okay let's let's finish this first okay so here is a topology you can see this is a optimized shape you can see there is a lot of masses here that was not really uh, useful or needed and we, if you go back to the uh, uh, stresses if I go back to the stresses you can see in this part the stress was very minimal so this is the part where it's usually work on by the removing the part that has uh, no uh, stresses like look at this part here see it's completely gone zero stresses this part is not loaded so I don't need it okay uh, here is the one I was explaining about the element one you can see here it's smooth smoother because it cuts through the elements based on the uh, factor zero to one here is based on the element okay and you can see here i can affect this uh, uh the retain method that will show you the part if you want to make it more conservative or less conservative it will take more or more of your geometry okay uh here is both of them at the same time the red is the one you have to keep the blue is the one you have you it's totally safe to remove and then the rest it's up to you to how conservative you want to be uh, with your model okay now if I go to here I can just do right click export STL file then I can save this geometry here as an STL file and I already did this so I, I uh, let me open it in space claim so here here's the body you can see here's our uh, optimized body as an STL file you can see it's a lot of facets here and this is a facets tab I was talking to you about you can see there is uh, I can fix uh, the sharp edges I can fix uh, the I can do some shrink 
uh, shrink crab, but you have to select uh, some parameters here so you, you, you don't affect your geometry shape. A lot of factor you can uh, use to, sm to smooth these edges here. You can see it's not very smooth. So you might need to smooth this a little bit. Once you do this, you can, if you click right click here, you can save converted, uh, uh, converted to solid, which I already did. So let me open it here. Okay, so now we have a, a solid component. Okay, I didn't do smoothing here, but uh, if you want, you can do this. So this part here, I can just take it and rerun the solu solution by redefining the boundary condition and, and the loads. And then to, to make sure this my optimized geometry was not affected by the, by the, uh, by the optimization process I did. Uh, I think this is what I have to say. So if anybody has any question, Please let me know. As I said before, I can I could have cut the geometry here to make it like a cylinder here and a cylinder here, so I don't have this same part here. You can see this part is a little bit thin. You can get uh, you, you can avoid this by making in the solid cut the solid here and and use this part, this part, and this part as an uh, exception or exclusion when we did the uh, it was um, sorry it was in the optimization part i believe yes here in the exclusion instead of exclusion boundary condition you could have excluded uh parts or name selection it's it's totally up to you uh okay let me oh i didn't show you the I didn't show you the uh, manufacturing constraint. It's here. From here, you can select if you want to use any uh, manufacturing constraint. Uh, as I said, it's the size, the pullout direction, the extrusion, cyclic, or symmetry. You can add one of these uh, as an extra constraint. Okay. Uh, and then you can also connect it to additive manufacturing overhang constraint that's another constraint you can add uh, you try to avoid the overhang because of the additive manufacturing you would you don't want to be printing in the air okay i have another question let's see uh, for the manufacturing method can it be injection oh no answer this one uh, can you please send me a demo model model for static or in model? I'll try to do that. Uh, for topology optimization, the static structure analysis has to be a linear analysis, correct? Yes, that's correct. It can't work with nonlinear analysis, either material. No, no, this is, as I said in the limitation slides, you cannot do nonlinear uh, analysis, either model analysis, which is linear, or static structure, which is linear without using nonlinear material or nonlinear contacts. No, you cannot do that. Um, you're welcome. Somebody's asking, can you try to make 80% mass retain? I mean, 20% mass retain. All right, so you try, uh, we can try quickly to play with the mass, for example, here. So he said you, he wanna make it like 20%. Let's have a quick look and see how this will affect. Hopefully, but again, you have to uh, when you have this, you can duplicate. Usually, what people do is what people usually do is the the uh, in mechanical in in the project here, they will duplicate they will duplicate uh, the the topology optimization. And you can run different optimization and see how the final shape looks like. Let's say, what's the effect of the mass? What was the effect of the compliance? What is 50% will look like? What's 80% will look like? All of this will help you to understand your, your geometry and optimization. Chris, do you have a question? Do you have a point to add? Uh, uh, 
this, this is Chris. I didn't have a question, but I was just going to add that this webinar is being recorded and in a couple of days, we're going to get it onto our website. You can go to Ozone Engineering website at ozoninc.com and on the top toolbar under resources there, you'll find a webinar library where you can find this recording in a couple of days and our previous webinars are already up there. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. All right, so for the question about the 20%, you can see here how the geometry completely looks different now. Again, the main part with the high stress will be maintained, but the rest will, will, will be gone. Like if I look here, uh, here, you see, so if we look at the stresses, let's have a quick look at the stresses. The, the stresses will usually around the joint, right? So here, the, the high stresses are here. So this part maintained, and of course, the, the boundary condition are maintained as well. That's why we can see here is the same, here is the same, and here is this, even though there is no stresses here, but we have a boundary condition, so we cannot exclude that. And to maintain the, the, the load, uh, like track of the load, this webs has to be maintained so the load will find a path to move between the, the boundary condition. So as I said, you can play around with this uh, uh, optimization objectives and constraint to get the, 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 the shape that you think it's the best for you from a manufacturing side or from uh, to achieve your goals from different uh, from different angles. Okay, I see a hand, but I don't see a question. Yeah, go ahead, Tong. If you have a question, please uh, type your question. Um, can you put multiple response constraint in the place? I believe you can. Uh, I believe you can. But okay, somebody's asking here mode above X hertz. Okay, this will be in the model analysis. This will be in the model analysis. But yes, you can you can put multiple response constraint. Yes, but in this in this example, for example, uh, in this model, I cannot do any hertz because of the this is just a static structure. There's no uh, frequencies in this in this part. Okay, uh, any other questions? All right, so let me uh, let me take you back here uh, to our website. So please visit, uh, oops. Hello? Okay, link. Okay, something's wrong here. All right, so here's our web page. If you go to resources, webinar library, that's what Chris was uh, telling you. Just go to resources, webinar library, and then you can find uh, you can you can find a lot of information. Here's some previous webinars. You can watch the previous one, and this one will be also uh, uploaded here uh, in a couple of days max. Let's see. We have another question. Uh, I do to pause your analysis. Did not keep the connectivity between hole. So could you explain me why? All right. So that's probably okay. As uh, somebody's asking here. Uh, when I do a topology analysis, did not keep the connectivity between holes. So could you explain me why? All right. So in this case, it's basically your exclusion. You didn't exclude them. Uh, I'm not sure if your holes had boundary condition on, on them or not. I would assume no. I would assume no. So if you have holes, 
for example, you need it for an assembly or something. So you might need to make a, a like cylindrical shape around the hole as, as a, a, and separate them from the main part and then use these cylinders as an exclusion. So you can, when you do the optimization, this part will not be will not get affected. It will uh, the the software will maintain them because they they are needed. Okay, I think I think that's what happened in your case. Does topology optimization make use of uh, HPC to get faster solution? Uh, I believe it does because it works through ANSYS Workbench and ANSYS Workbench benefit from uh, HPC. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay, uh, Tron saying he considers these holes as exclusive region, but it did not work. Uh, it's hard to tell. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this model, so I don't know why this happened. Uh, maybe you need to define uh, the connection between the holes as ex exclusion then. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the, the range around it has zero uh, in the constraint. I didn't do mass retain, but the stress limited. Well, I, I, I don't know what, what's wrong with the model. I, I, I have to see that to, to, to have a, a better judgment. But I would assume that you you might didn't do the exclusion in the in the in the right way. Uh, but I don't want to uh, make any judgment if I didn't see it. Okay, uh, you are very welcome. Do we have any other questions? Okay, uh, as Chris mentioned, please visit our. Uh, webinar uh, group, uh, webinar uh, page, you will see there is a lot of webinars coming. Uh, feel free to register to any or all of them. There is always a lot of useful information. We have uh, uh, experts in our company in uh, all the field of uh, FEA and CFD. So feel free to join it. And uh, I think I don't have any questions. So I would like to thank you all for joining us today. And I hope uh, the webinar was useful for you. Uh, the the recording the re, uh, the recording will be posted in a couple of days on this page I'm showing. So feel free to watch it again. Uh, and if you have any question, uh, please send it to us at info at ozenink.com or support it. Uh, yeah, at info at ozenink.com. That will be the best uh, to reach uh, to us. Uh, thank you. And uh, have a great day and looking forward to see you in the next webinars. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm going to add one other thing, which is just that we have job opening currently for a mechanical oh. engineer and an electrical engineer. If anyone has any interest, please check out our website in the jobs section. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Bye-bye.